the rivers aren't the bay, and that's what kind of confuses people. Yeah. Well, we have the exactly. Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and the bay's getting cleaner. The rivers have never been more polluted, and uh, the headwaters of the river, in particular, are really bad. So that's where we're trying to concentrate our work, and that's why I quit my job, moved back. Um, and that's where I'm going to spend the next 20 years trying to make a difference. The economic recession was as hard on the bay as it was on the economy. Um, the main stem of the bay is getting better, but the bay is under a lot of pressure. The environment is at war with the economy. Okay, That's really where we're going. We have industrial farming. We have industrial power plants. We have industrial natural gas export stations. And they're not taking the environment into account. It, it's about return to shareholders. It's, um, it's not about return to the environment. And so you have this tremendous pressure to grow and to make money. To Instead of 60 bushels an acre, we need 120 bushel an acre. And if we can use GMO seeds that are treated with Roundup, you know, well, fine, let's do it. Um, and so that pressure has been winning. Mm -hmm. And... I think that's what went wrong. The economy has been kicking the environment's ass. Last year, um, we worked hard to get the phosphate management tool, known as the PMT, um, in place. You know, we've been working, I've been working hard to get a phosphate management tool in place for years. The chemistry of chicken litter is such that you have to put down three times the amount of chicken litter or three times the amount of phosphorus to get the nitrogen you need for corn. So what's happening is we have these industrial chicken houses. We don't have chicken farmers, by the way. Just so you say, there's no chicken family farm. These are chicken ranchers that are industrial chicken people. Um, they produce millions of pounds of chicken litter, and they put it down on the same field year after year after year, three times the amount of phosphorus that you need to get the uptake in nitrogen for corn or soybean, which is our primary um, so those, that pressure has been putting a lot of phosphorus in the soil and getting the PMT in place, which will now prevent farmers from putting down phosphorus-based fertilizers like chicken litter, where we have hot spots. A lot of people say it's the best chance to clean up the rivers in 30 years. You know, our organization, the Midshore Riverkeeper Conservancy, uh, river keeps the Chop Tank, the Miles, the Y, Eastern Bay. The Chop Tank River, the USGS just said, both the long and the short term trend for phosphorus and nitrogen pollution is getting worse. Okay, so over the last 10 years, even with all the farmers have been doing a lot, they've been putting cover crops down, they've been doing buffers, they've really been under the gun to produce less runoff. Uh, but still, the problem's getting worse. So, when are we going to see results? The PMT goes into effect. Um, there's a lot of legacy phosphorus in the groundwater. Uh, very smart people have been working on this problem for years. Uh, Josh McGrath, others at the University of Maryland, the Hughes Center for Agroecology. You know, this legacy phosphorus could be in the groundwater for 15 to 30 years. Okay. But we could see, for example, did you notice that the water was clearer this year? Mm. There was a lot of water clarity improvement this year. Now, I think it's probably more weather related, but the fact that you can see the bottom in six to seven feet of water in Eastern Bay is something that you haven't been able to do mm. in 25 years. Oh. And it really is a game changer. And people are starting to say, hey, if we can see the bottom, it just being able to see the bottom improves your quality of life significantly. Mm. Um, so we'll get more people, if we can get more improvement, we should get more people helping. Let me, here's an interesting thing. Governor Hogan comes in, right? Hogan and, has to. And the, the governor, the new governor, um, says, I'm going to pull the phosphorus management tool, and I'm going to pull the rain tax. And it looked bad. I mean, for environmentalists, it looked bad. But the funny thing is, is Governor Hogan made good appointments. And we compromised, and we worked together. And we got a lot done, and it was very beneficial for the environmental movement and I give the Hogan administration a lot of credit because it looked really bad going into it. Um, and now we have a PMT and we have this rain tax term is ridiculous, but we have a stormwater runoff bill that's 
defendable. Um, so it's nice to see compromise between, you know, for years we had O'Malley and his team wouldn't really compromise with the farmers, although he was very environmentalist. Yeah. We couldn't come to an agreement. Right. So it's been a, a unexpected breath of fresh air. Um, I'm yeah. not worried about state issues as much as I used to be. Federal issues are a major issue. For example, the Conowingo Dam relicensing. Yeah. Right now, in Congress, the federal government, the Hydropower Improvement Act of 2015 will take the authority away from MDE, MDA, Department of Natural Resources, on the Conowingo relicensing. So there's an organization in D.C. called FERC, the Federal Energy Regulation Commission. And they're a permitting agency, and they have no real interest in clean water or cleaning up the bay. So Exelon has the lease on Conowingo. And in order to renew the lease, even Governor Hogan has come out and opposed this federal legislation, this Hydropower Improvement Act, which will take the authority from this state and give it to a permitting agency in bowels of DC the authority to do the license and that could be very very bad for us I have two incredibly beautiful rivers and I'm really lucky to be a river keeper uh, being a river keeper is advocacy its education its restoration its community outreach um, and it's a lot of uh, legal uh, both land and environment use research so we do water testing at about 100 sites on the Miles and Y River. Uh, we monitor for phosphorus, nitrogen, dissolved oxygen. We do bacteria testing in swimming beaches. And we respond to that testing. You know, we have, uh, for example, the Miles River Yacht Club, we've had some high bacteria readings that make it unsafe to swim. You know, mothers that teach sailing or kids that go to sailing are upset about that. Um, I recently wrote a grant for a pump out boat which got funded by uh, the Clean Vessel Act, so that next year, um, outside of St. Michael's Harbor and the Miles River Yacht Club, there's two 300 boats on a holiday weekend that flush their marine heads into the, into the river. And that's really what's causing some of these bacteria readings. So I was able to respond to that a need. Um, the Y River, you know, we just got a grant to uh, study the, there's seven watersheds that come into the Y River. Five of them have enough flow to have an impact. Hmm. So we just got a grant uh, for uh, five years of testing the sub-watersheds. And what that's going to do is test the non-tidal portions. And what we're looking for is a disproportional amount of pollution coming from one of those sub-watersheds so that we can concentrate restoration projects. People need to, to find out about their water. And, you know, people take it for granted. And water isn't like woods. In woods, you can tell if it's dirty because you look in there and somebody, uh, somebody dumped a refrigerator and you can see it. But people look at the water and think, wow, it's beautiful, but they don't really know how it could be. So I talk about, and you can probably cut this out, but um, my favorite concept is generational amnesia. Have you heard about that? No, go ahead. Okay, so you move here and you say, God, the river's beautiful. Okay. I've lived here my whole life. I say the river's polluted. So the next generation begins to accept it as the standard. So we have this generational amnesia going on. Every generation believes that polluted rivers are okay. And so I want to reverse that generational amnesia. And I almost came to tears, I swear to God. The other day I was in Eastern Bay and the water was so pretty and I could see the bottom. I'm sort of bouncing across to St. Michael's and I don't remember seeing the bottom except for when I was a kid. And I don't know if it was the cold winter or the way the rain came. And someday, just magically, all this stuff we do is going to go poof and we're going to have clean water. At least that's my dream.